Hey guys, welcome to this channel. In this video, we'll be looking at what are prompts. Remember, the complete output generated by the model itself depends on the kind of prompt that you input in the model per se. So it's very important to know how the prompts are structured in order to generate the perfect output. So let's go back to the very basics of prompt and we'll try a bunch of examples that kind of help us guide us through the whole thing. Uh, post this section, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and um, also look at some of the websites that enable us to generate or enable us to visualize the prompts and then use those prompts in order to generate our own of those. So, so the basic idea... The video, are interested in generative AI, and check this course out on Udemy. It's about the world of generative AI. Every concept that you need to know, AI text generation, image generation, avatar generation, AI audio generation, and finally video generation. So you learn to automate every single bit of content with AI. After checking out this course, it's on discount right now. So you may still be able to get your hands on it. Jump into the video. Now. So the basic idea behind stable diffusion prompts is is to guide the generation of the image. Now, this prompt is like a sequence of words uh, that provides context to the you know, generated image per se. The image generator then uses this prompt in order to produce the output that is coherent with the consistent prompt. So in a very, very layman terms, what prompts are is like the set of texts uh, or set of instructions for machine to follow in order to generate that image for you. Now, um, that said, there is some discipline. Uh, there is some discipline that you should follow in order to generate the right, uh, you know, correct prompts per se, right? So these are all the things that these are all the elements that you need to consider in a prompt. And this this would you know this is like the descriptive list of all the ideal things that a prompt should have, or maybe less less or few less or more depending on what your use case is. So the number one thing and the most important and the thing that should the prompt should definitely have is the subject. So it should it could be a person, animal, or a landscape. Now, in if you're talking about AI avatars, the subject primarily has to be you, your prompt that you had trained the model on. Um, this could be, say, for example, Yasti, the prompt that you had entered when training the model, or the prompt that the model would already have, like Superman or maybe a celebrity like Jon Snow um, or, a, or an animal like Tiger or a landscape like Japan, etc, etc. So the subject needs to be present regardless of what this is the most, this is the mandatory thing a prompt should have. Then followed is a verb which may be, uh, you know, optional when this, what, this basically says what the subject is doing, right? So it, the subject could be standing, sitting or eating or running or riding a cycle, whatever, right? So the so the uh, once you have the subject in place, what you need to mention is the verb of what the model or the subject would be doing. Generally, if you add portrait to the prompt, it means that the subject is looking at the camera or it's just the first upper half of the body of the subject. Now, after that, uh, this, the prompt or the model needs to have the adjective this is the quality um, of the subject per se, right? So it could be beautiful portrait of Yash of the subject, meaning beautiful portrait of a tiger, beautiful portrait of a dog, etc., etc. Realistic, big, colorful, etc. So whatever you want the uh, adjective to be for the prompt is what you need to add in the prompt as well. So if I were to generate like a sample prompt here, let's put all of this together and see what we can generate. So beautiful portrait of EST standing. Environment could be the mostly the background. So outdoor, underwater, in the sky, at night, etc. etc. Whatever works based on the use case. So you can stay uh, at night. All of this needs to be separated by comma in case you can kind of create like a small sentence out of it. So in this case, beautiful portrait of your standing at night is a sentence which will go. So this is the context that machine will use either to generate the background or arrange lighting or arrange the context accordingly. Then you can say the lighting. Now this is because it's night. I'm going to say neon lighting. So uh, now it says beautiful portrait of your tree standing at night, neon lighting. So now you, you can start visualizing in your head uh, how the portrait is going to look, right? So that's the idea behind this whole thing that 
you put all of these things together that the machine would then visualize in its own way and generate like a uh, image per se. This is fascinating and uh, I know this is fascinating, right? So now you have to also consider the emotion. This could be romantic, grim, energetic. Let's say grim. So this should generate like a scary portrait. Now, if you if you are visualizing while I'm doing this, it says that the beautiful portrait of a Yasti standing at night, neon lighting, grim, meaning he's looking uh, more from the horror perspective. And then you need to take into consideration the uh, art inspiration. And like I said, the most powerful thing uh, of generative AI is that it can combine the work of multiple artists in order to generate the uh, final picture for you. Now in this case, I'm going to say in the style of Arjun, uh, Gerald Broom, Ate Gillian and Mike Mingola, all of these are artists. So I want a combination of pictures with these guys in this. Now also note that there is a limit to the number of characters you can add in a prompt. So while I'm trying my best to experiment with what I can here, ensure that you kind of limit yourself uh, with respect to the characters you add in the prompt per se. Now then you have to mention the art medium, which could be oil on canvas, watercolor, sketch, or you can also say comic art or photography. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, comic art, because I've noticed that it does better for my pictures, especially when I have comic art in this. So I'm going to say comic art. Okay. And then there is a photography style. Uh, again, if this is something that you'd want to take into consideration, feel free to. You can use Polaroid, long exposure, monochrome, GoPro, fisheye, bokeh. All of these things would, I think, help your portrait seem more realistic from that extent. So it's the call you'd want to take. Uh, feel free to kind of, you know, do permutation combination depending on what you want to achieve. And then there is an art style, manga, fantasy, minimalism, abstract. So let's try minimalism. I'm, I think I'm going to break my model here, but let's explore the boundaries of what model can do anyways, right? So art style, I've already kind of took comic art, but I want to limit, I want to try to keep it minimalism. Then material could be fabric, wood and clay. Again, this depends on the type of... Uh, you know, final image that you want to generate. So it could be on a fabric, wood or a clay. Then color scheme could be pastel, vibrant, dynamic lighting. So I'm going to say vibrant. Computer graphics could be 3D octane cycle. So I'm going to skip that. Basically, it will um, help you generate like a 3D render of sorts, octane render or the cycles we have generated. So th these are all terms that I'm not completely aware of, but you can use these if you understand these, right? So. Then there is illustration, isometric, uh, Pixar, scientific, comic. I'm going to use comic that I've already used, right? So that's going to be my illustration. Uh, you, in computer graphics, you can also use Unreal Engine 5, which may make it look more realistic uh, from that extent. Finally, talking about quality, uh, you can use high definition. You can use 4K. You can use 8K or 64K. Again, if you have a great GPU or if you bought like a premium plan, all of this would matter to you. In my case, I'm just going to say HD, right? And let's try this prompt. Again, we generated this prompt uh, from scratch, doing nothing. We're going to use the same negative prompts that have worked better for me. I'm going to add the link to this sheet in the document. And post this, by the way, we'll experiment, uh, you know, a bit on some of the other functions that uh, you also need to keep in mind, but let's try it with this prompt. Um, let's quickly wait for the model to generate an output for this. Use 400 into 400. I hope it's not too bad. You can see it generated like an anime character with the hair that are that is close to me. So. This one's this one looks super cool. So I'm just gonna take one of the images, right? So this also looks super cool. So you can see that it's a grim face. There is dark lighting. There is neon lighting. Uh, then the person is looking at the camera. I think this is the most realistic uh, that it has generated. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it. But 
you can see that not all the images match the criteria, right? Regardless, you will see these cases where only few of the images from the render will actually match uh, to what you had requested in the you know prompt itself so you can play around with this guidance case. and this is going to be it for the video itself if you are interested to learn more about prompts ai app that generation or generative ai in general check out the video or the course link in the description sign up for the course it will teach you everything you need to know it will give you access to hundreds and thousands of prompts to generate whatever you can and cannot think of so i if this video helped consider subscribing to the channel drop a like on this video and i'll see you in the next one thanks so much guys